by Sir Ralph Hopton, the Royalists had deposited their men throughout the region to alleviate the burden of winter quarters on one particular city. Sir William Waller did likewise for Parliament's army, and with the exception of small wars, December of 1643 was a reprieve from the Civil War. The Earl of Crawford was placed in charge of the Royalists stationed in Alton. Crawford requested Waller to trade a runlet of sack, a term used for wine, and in trade he would offer the enemy commander an ox. When Waller produced the wine, Crawford jeered at Waller to come and collect the ox. The cause of such disrespect was due to a sharp decline in Waller's reputation the previous months. At the Battle of Roundway Down in the summer, the parliamentarians had the Royalists on their heels in the southwest. Expecting to eliminate Hopton's haggard and retreating men, Waller and his army fixed their position on high ground to meet an enemy detachment from Oxford. Being outnumbered and facing an enemy with better ground, astonishingly, the King's horse attacked Waller's men. The parliamentarians were unable to match the spirited cavaliers and fled down the steep slopes behind them, including a sudden unseen precipice 300 feet deep, now known as the Bloody Ditch. Parliament's infantry were bearing the fight against the enemy. Once Hopton arrived, the rebels fled in disorder. The Royalists called it the Battle of Runaway Down. received a taunt to collect the ox, 5,000 parliamentarians marched to Alton for a surprise attack. At dawn, the startled royalists were forced to condense their defensive position at St. Lawrence Church. Effectively using outbuildings, breastworks, earthworks, and makeshift scaffolding inside the church to produce multiple tiers of firepower, the estimated 1,000 royalist soldiers were able to hold against Waller's army. hours the royalists eventually were cornered inside the church building. From a breastwork of stacked dead horse, Colonel Bowles declared the first man of his to surrender was to be run through by his own sword. Bowles is said to have killed seven men himself before finally expiring that day. Hours earlier the Earl Crawford had already fled the city, leaving his hat coat and wine that Waller supplied him, that day forward the parliamentarians had a taunt of their own, saying about Crawford that he left his sack in Alton in reference to the wine. Colonel Bowles, however, was left with an epitaph in the Church of St. Lawrence. Alton will tell you of that famous fight which was man-made and bade this world good night. His virtuous life feared not mortality. His body must, his virtues cannot die. Because his blood was there so nobly spent. This is his tomb, the church, his monument. <laughs> <laughs> 